The models of the previous tutorials were short-term models of the economy, in the sense that they were based on the assumption that wages and prices are fixed. In the next tutorials, we lift that restriction and focus on three main questions. Why do wages and prices change? What are the macroeconomic implications of flexible wages and prices? And what are the roles of fiscal and of monetary policy in an economy with flexible wages and prices? First, however, we need to set the stage for further discussion of these issues. In everyday life, we tend to think of wages as the money wage of a person or a group of persons in specific jobs or with specific skills, and of prices as the price of a specific good or a group of goods. That is, we tend to take a microeconomic view of wages and prices. Since we're now dealing with macroeconomics, our approach must be different. Here, wages refer to the wage level and prices to the price level. What, more specifically, do we mean by the wage level and the price level? First, we focus on the wage level. The wage level indicates the average pre-tax money wage of employees. However, since there are many different wages covering a wide range from very high to very low salaries, it's not meaningful simply to compute the wage level as a simple average of money wages. To illustrate, assume that there are a hundred dishwashers with an hourly wage of ten dollars, and two surgeons with an hourly wage of a hundred dollars. A simple average of wages is fifty-five dollars, not a very meaningful figure, since it doesn't reflect that there are fifty times as many dishwashers with a ten dollar wage than there are surgeons with a hundred dollar wage. To adjust for this bias, we compute the wage level as a weighted average of money wages, where the weights are the relative share of employees in different pay grades, or in our example, that is, or a wage level of $11.80. So, to sum up, we compute the wage level as the weighted average of pre-tax money wages.